The Nightingale of Separation by Baha'u'llah The Nightingale of Separation, perched upon the branch of the horizon, calls out in grief, You who are filled with yearning. The bird of loyalty sings upon the tree of eternity with the strains of this parting, you who are filled with yearning. As does the dove of the two seas upon the twigs of the lot tree of separation, that the departure is imminent, you who are filled with yearning. Say, the time of union has been fulfilled, and by virtue of the decree, that of absence has begun through this parting. You who are filled with yearning. Tears have flowed from the eyes of the immortals in the concourse on high because of this farewell. You who are filled with yearning. The breezes of joy that blew from the paradise of splendor have been stilled by this departure. You who are filled with yearning. By God, the faces of the celestial maidens in their chambers have paled at the prospect of this absence. You who are filled with yearning. The Huris rouge their cheeks blood-red, for they have heard about this leave-taking. You who are filled with yearning. And will never adorn their bodies with the silks of eternity, after learning of this departure. You who are filled with yearning. No sorrow shall ever compare to this grief in the realm of the unknowable essence, for the wind of separation is blowing, you who are filled with yearning. In this time when the bird of eternity has flown from the land of Iraq, and the people of longing and yearning burn with the fire of separation, this letter is being sent by this ephemeral ant to the friends of God. Friends, weep for as long as you have eyes, and cry out for as long as your souls exist. For the carpet of union, joining, nearness and encounter have been rolled up. Instead, the Sovereign of Destiny has, by virtue of a preordained decree, spread out the quilt of parting, leave-taking, absence and departure. The gales of separation and regret have gusted with such force that they have clothed the branches of being, whether visible or invisible, with the cloak of nothingness, then repaired to the blustery autumn of eternity. Then eyes should weep, ears listen to the wailing, tongues moan and lament, and bodies tumble into the dust of their birthplaces. Nevertheless, we praise God for having singled us out for these repeated misfortunes and unceasing afflictions, and give thanks to Him at all times and in all circumstances. He is, in truth, witness to His own words. In all the past scriptures, it is mentioned that a time will come, a season will arrive, and the bird of Persia shall sing an Arabian melody. Therefore, hasten to him, lovers of the celestial beauty, you who are distracted by the divine sanctum. Now that time has arrived, that breeze has wafted, and that bird has flown. But you have not seen it, nor attained it, and have not accomplished the goal. Indeed, you have not advanced towards what was written, nor have you listened. Now that moment has passed, and that day has slipped out of your grasp. That breeze shall not blow again in this land, that rose shall not again flower here, and that door shall never again open. Have you never heard that the nightingale of the Divine Garden seeks repose and settles only in the spiritual rose bower? 
that the Hohopi of the Sheba of love only makes its home in the Sinai of the Spirit, or that the heart of lovers seeks no visage save the beauty of the Beloved. Lovers, you have become immersed in thoughts of your own selves and never set out for the lands of the Beloved. What a marvellous heedlessness has overtaken contingent being and encompassed existence. The sun is radiant, brilliant and shining in the midst of the sky, but all are singing along with and have become intimates of the birds of night. I shall close with what the nightingale of separation sang in the land of Iraq, calling out to all who dwell beneath the horizon. The bird of immortality has flown to the city of the unknowable divine cloud, and the dove of the spirit has taken flight from its branch and sought another perch. Then weep, lovers and people of the concourse on high. Thus do we cast upon you the verses of parting, so that perhaps you will rise from the couches of heedlessness and join the ranks of the mindful. Say, hypocrites, this nightingale of constancy has taken wing from the rose of union, has set out for the garden of separation, and has consumed all the lovers in the precincts of Iraq. Friends, do not forget the union of souls while you are in the affliction of separation. Lament this departure, but sow the seed of patience in the good earth of the heart, watering it with your tears, so that it will give forth sweet fruit. This is the counsel of the nightingale of the divine garden. Therefore, heed it. <laughs>